So this is going to be a quick demo of how to use the um, JMeter autocorrelation plugin. So where do we start? Uh, we're not going to start with a script already made for us. So instead, we are going to go um, and use the provided template. So once I've got the correlation plugin installed, all I have to do is go to templates and I have a bunch of things that I can use here. Um, I've got one called BZM Correlation Recorder. And once I have that, it's gonna set me up with a bunch of nice stuff. Specifically, I'll have a thread group with a recording controller and I will have a, um, the actual correlation recorder itself. Um, this will look very similar to you if you've ever seen any of the other recorders in JMeter. It's pretty much exactly the same, but it's got some kind of hidden benefits. So uh, with that, without changing anything else, um, I am going to go ahead and start recording this. Note that I do need to uh, be able to direct traffic through this proxy, because what's going to happen is that JMeter is going to start a proxy and we are going to send web traffic through that and we need to be able to record it. So this is going to be in on my local host and I've got a port set here. So when I start this, uh, JMeter will also create for me a certificate and we have to be able to trust that certificate. So I've already imported that into my browser, but in general, um, all we have to do is go to our browser, go to our settings and import our certificate here um, and make sure that our proxy settings are set to a manual proxy and I'm setting everything through localhost with a port that matches what I'm using in JMeter. Now, because that's true, everything that I do here will create a request that is captured in JMeter. So I'm using a local uh, WordPress site here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna log into the admin panel. I've got very creative uh, usernames and passwords. And what I wanna do is I'm just gonna go into check out my posts. So I've got a blog here, right? And I want to be able to edit this thing. I want to make sure that um, I can do it in an automated way using my performance tests. So I'm going to go and edit an existing post. So um, I've got something here that says this is totally a real blog about performance testing. And it is totally a real blog. I mean, it is totally a real blog. And and I'm just gonna save that update because now I've reaffirmed myself that my blog is a totally real blog and everybody has to believe me. Now I'm gonna log out of here and that is my user flow. It's very simple, um, it's very concise, but even something like this can be really hard to make a performance test for. Um, I'm gonna show you how. Um, so I've got this little dialogue that comes up and says, hey, do you want me to start uh, detecting dynamic values for you? And I'm gonna say yes. And what is happening in the background right now is my test is actually running. And um, I'm going to get a little wizard that says, hey, 12 requests have failed. Do you want to generate suggestions to fix them? Um, for the moment, I'm going to say no, just because I want to be able to show you like what we're actually getting out of this. So if I go and I look at this um, test, there may be a couple things I know that I need to change about this because I know this application. And you probably will know an application um, if you're doing performance tests on it. Um, but if I go and I run this, you can see I get a bunch of errors. And the reason I get a bunch of errors is because I did a login, right? I went and I logged in, I said, hey, I'm the admin, here's my password. And in the browser, um, the sessions are all handled by JavaScript and stuff is happening where the browser goes, hey, every time I make a request, I'm going to fill in session tokens, I'm going to do whatever I need to do. But I've got all of the old values recorded here. We need to correlate those. So, I could go in and say, okay, well, somewhere in here in this response data that I've got a ton of stuff from, I can find what I need to find and do what I need to do, but I don't want to have to do that. So instead, I'm going to go to my correlation recorder and I'm going to go into this tab called correlation. Now, I said no before to say, hey, I don't want you to automatically correlate that for me. I actually do want it to automatically correlate for me. Right, and I'm gonna do, I'm gonna say automatic correlation, uh, or sorry, automatic comparison and variable detection. The other one here, existing correlation rules, this is for if you've already recorded and you've already saved the correlation rules that you've found. And I have that template here and I wanna be able to use that. Basically saying that the work that I've done before using the automatic correlation recorder, 
I don't have to keep doing this process again. I've already got the rules. I can just bring them in and automatically correlate based on a previous recording that I did. So I'm kind of building up everything that I want to be able to do here. So with this, I get um, a suggestion of things that could be correlated. Not everything in here necessarily needs to be correlated. And if I actually just went through and said, yes, correlate everything, it's not going to work the way I want to. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, actually, don't correlate all of these. Uh, I'm going to turn them all off because I know that the ones that really matter are these session tokens. They're called nonces. So I'm going to do that one and I'm going to do this one. Again, this is the kind of the part where I say, this is not a, like a silver bullet for everything. You're still going to have to know how your application works. You're still going to have to know kind of what needs to be correlated. You just don't, know, don't need to know where it comes from, where it's going, because this is going to do that for you. So I'm going to say autocorrelate. I'm going to get this little thing that says, hey, we've successfully added those correlations to your test plan. Say, freaking sweet. That's awesome. Um, now, if I go and I look, at my view results tree, which is where I see the results from the test. I see I've got a bunch of errors. Now let's run this test again. Now all the errors are gone. It's all green. That's literally what we're trying to do here. I've got um, a bunch of places where dynamic values need to go, and I've pulled them from the places where they are given to me by the server, and I'm giving them back to the server to prove that I'm still the same person. Um, and just to kind of like open up some of these requests to see what we've actually done, we'll see we've got regular expression extractors that have been added into this um, into this request. It says let's capture this variable. And where does it get used? Well, anywhere where that variable ends up being um, put into a request, I think we're going to find them in the headers in different places, but I'm not going to go and look for them because I don't really care where they show up as long as they are in the right place. Now, I mentioned before about the correlation rules that I have created and want to be able to save these things. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up that suggestions panel again and I'm say these two things I know that I need to correlate because I've gone through a couple of iterations of this. I know how this works. Next time I want to record something like this, I don't want to have to do this again. I want to use existing rules. So let's save these correlation rules. And so we export these into a format that lets us share them. Basically, I can save this template and I can give it to anybody on my team. I'm going to say, hey, next time we want to do an update or we want to do, we want to change something about testing that we're doing, we're doing whatever, go and record a new script but don't correlate everything by hand ever again. Just take the template that I have saved here, record it, and auto-correlate based on this uh, template. That way they get the benefit of the work that I've already done. And it didn't even take me that much work anyway. That is exactly what we're doing here. And that's all I really wanted to show.